Everybody can see. All right, y'all. We're gonna go ahead and start the rec uh, recording. Uh, we're gonna do. Hmm. Y'all show, man. I want to get y'all some. Yeah, that's a long ride. Okay. All right. So here we go. We're gonna talk about the Ten Commandments of marriage, building a solid foundation for a successful marriage. Like we said, we've done this before, and all we can do is give you advice from us. We ain't no marriage uh, <laughs> experts. You know, but I can say my father, uh, he's been a marriage counselor and a pastor for over 25 years. He has 45 years of successful marriage, and he has taught me principles and helped people all over the country in their marriage. Mm -hmm. So I do have principles for that. Um, I honor um, the elders and stuff that is here, so if y'all have insight, Absolutely. anything like that, please help us with uh, with the presentation. But this is something that me and my wife came up with uh, some years ago about the Ten Commandments. What I kind of did, I was kind of at work one day, and I was like, you know what, let me look at the Ten Commandments and see how we can relate that to marriage. I brought it home to the wife, and we just kind of put it together. All right, how many people in here married? Oh, that's about everybody. What's <laughs> 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 wrong with Brother Scott, y'all? What's wrong? That's my dude, though. He crazy as Oh, what are you lying? <laughs> so, <laughs> we live, but we just, we ain't live, but we on. Um, we, no, we know. Thank you, edit it out. Yeah, I'm going to edit all that out. All right, here we go. So, the Ten Commandments to marriage. So let's look at the Ten Commandments first. Thou shalt have not. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make any graven image, nor bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. People act like this fourth commandment ain't there no more. Right. Keep the Sabbath day sanctified, as the Lord your God commanded you. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thou shalt not Thou shalt not kill, neither shall thou commit adultery, neither shall thou steal, neither shall thou bear false witness against thy neighbor. Neither shall thou desire thy neighbor's wife, neither shall thou desire to cover thy neighbor's house, his field, his manservant, or his maidservant, his ox or his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor. So now, if y'all have stuff you want to chime in on a point, feel free to chime in. All right? Okay, now I'm going to take us off to you. You're going to feel a whole lot better. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so the first commandment is, Thou shall not have no other gods before me. Mm -hmm. In the relationship, the relationship must have preeminence over all things. Including children. Including children. You don't build your relationship based on your children. Because children are going to leave one day. Yes. And if you do that, put it based on your children, later on in life, you as espouses ain't going to know each other no more. Because anything that you practice, you perfect. So if you practice not spending time together, you are perfected. And then you get to the point where, look, we together, but we just passing through. We basically became teammates, but we don't have a relationship. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the relationship, it must have preeminence over all things. And this is another thing we, we mean by that. When you look at a triangle, all right, everybody know how a triangle is done. All right, you got your tip up here and your two sides. It's equal length. <laughs> at the top must be the relationship, right? And you got the two people standing standing at each corner. Now, I either can make that relate. You look at the relationship as a flower that blossoms. I can either make that relationship grow or I can kill it. Mm -hmm. All right. So say if the relationship is uh, a balloon, I can sit there on my side because most of the time when you're counseling people, they always talking about the other person. If it weren't for that person, that person doing this and that person doing that. If I look at that relationship right and I on my side I keep shooting at the relationship before I know it that balloon gonna pop and is she doing the same thing mm -hmm. I don't care how I have been all my life right. if how I have been all my life is hindering the relationship right. then I got to stop right. I got to before I be talking about is that person following what they doing I got to look within myself and say you know what what am I doing what is the most I showing me about myself because things that I'm doing, and we had to both learn that. It was stuff that each each one of us was doing that was killing the relationship. Right. I was insensitive. I could figure out, what's she mad about again? <laughs> oh, my goodness. She upset again. <laughs> I tried to understand the last time. This is what can be overly sensitive sometimes. All right, so as it was important to me to you, you know what? 
being insensitive and being um, that type of way is doing something to the relationship. And most of the time in a relationship, when a woman, when you show a woman that you care about how she feels, you'll get a better response from her. Mm -hmm. You might can't fix the problem because, men, we problem fix. We want the problem fixed. Look, let me know what the problem is. <laughs> but sometimes that y'all just want to do what? Just want to talk about it. Just want to fuss about it for a little bit. You don't have to fix it. You can't fix it. You just want to fuss about it. No, don't come to the job. <laughs> so you had to give them the opportunity to just just get it all out. Right, and uh, when he was, when he mentioned as far as well, this is how I've been all my life. That's not a good excuse. You shouldn't want your spouse to put up with you and work around how you are. You're supposed to be catering to each other. Why why would I meet someone to walk? I want him walking around eggshells around me and not. You know, having control over them because I might have an emotional meltdown at any moment. You know, you say the right trigger word or something. That that's just that's no way to do it. That's right. Video, they'll be to go back and check it out. We got <laughs> brother Wolf in action. Don't be putting extra amens. So that's me. That's me. Goodness, boy, that car ride. <laughs> you ever been somewhere you know you messed up? Right, oh, here we go. I already know in this car. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with nothing. me. That, that's the cue when she say nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> you know what time it is. Something wrong. I think, I think we're about to pour a while. I'm coming. Yeah. We, exactly. What we'll do, we'll be so like, I'll okay. Say the wrong thing. I just, I'm just kind of exactly. getting the words together. We'll give each other space to talk. <laughs> that's right. Because that's what you do. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
That woman know the real us, <laughs> you know, in that house. And it's going to check where you are at spiritually. Yes. So it's important. I don't want to lie. <laughs> I will not lie. I don't want to lie. Exactly. Don't make me lie. The worst thing is to try to be in front of people and you know, you know it ain't right. That's why a lot of times right before we come, especially uh, some years ago, right before yes. we came in, we'd be like, you know what, baby? Let's get this straight, cause I can't go go in worship upset like it's this. It's the truth. I don't know what's going on the keyboard. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the keyboard. I'm on the keyboard, <laughs> keyboard man. I ain't even in service. Yeah. I'm playing like that. And then she come over there. But see, that's just a lot of that shows a lot of response. You know the What if he would have been like, I need water myself. <laughs> <laughs> Dealing with them water. I'm thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, let's get to the next That's point. Great. All right, second commandment. Let me make sure I'm recording. Cool. Okay. Thou shalt not make unto any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. We got on here. How can we relate that to marriage? All past imagery must be put away. Imagery of hurt, pain, anything that kills the relationship. Don't bow down and serve your character flaws or residue of past experiences. I'm going to read that slow and say it again. Cause that's why I said most of your single issues, your marriage issues is stuff that you didn't dealt with in your single life. Folks that you didn't dealt with or things that you didn't grow with growing up. It says, thou shalt make not any graven image. All past imagery must be put away. Imagery of hurt, pain, anything that's killing the relationship. Don't buy down or serve your character flaws or residue of past experiences. Don't be walking around, this man's name is Fred, and you think he Ted. Ted the one that hurt you. Fred getting the residue of that bad relationship. Because everything that Ted do, he's trying to do from a sincere heart. But if it reminds you of that, you going crazy. You flipping, you acting crazy. Because what? You still have that past residue on you. So that's the stuff that you got to get rid of. And what we mean by bowing down to your character flaws. Oh, one thing in our relationship. My wife would want to show me that she upset. And she wanted to make me feel that she upset. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she wanted to show me that she had, she was upset. So what she would display an attitude. So what we're saying here, because you're angry, don't use that as an opportunity to punish your husband or to punish your wife. Exactly. Exactly. You don't get to the point where, okay, now I feel like I done got disrespected, so I'm finna go crazy. I'm talking all crazy. I'm flipping up chairs and say, this woman gonna respect me in this house. Especially if you ain't gave the woman something to respect. Right. Right. You can't just right. jump in Bible scriptures and you ain't fulfilling it. Right. I'm the head. Right. But you ain't acting like no head. You ain't right. set the household up like no head. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? One thing, I'm going to tell you, this is one thing my daddy taught me. Let me say this. I'm going to let you go. I set myself up. He always taught me. like, son, you want to do what you need to do in life. He said, because a lot of things, the way that you set up can determine how your relationship will be. So he said, go ahead and get you a house, get you a car, 
so you can have all that already set up. So what I learned is I'm going to go ahead and position my life where this woman respect me as a man anyway. She see I'm already at this age. Got this going for me. Got that going for me. So a lot of re the respect factor is already there. And now it's easy. Right. But most of the men, I ain't trying to do nothing. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They ain't trying to have nothing. So it's good to already set yourself up to be respected as a man. So you don't have to pull for that right. when you're in a relationship. Right. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. You lost your thought. I did. I'm going now. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's in our purpose. Not women have a purpose because they have to end up in that. You know, I don't need a man that does something. Your mama got hurt by her. Now I've taught you not to be a man and this type of thing. And I didn't say that when I came back. The purpose is inside of you. God has made us. God has made us to want stability, to want somebody who is going to be supportive and that we can depend on. So if everybody in there. You're looking at like a little child, what we call a jelly baby. You know, a little stand up child. You know, that's right. To be able to respect that about a man. That's right. So that's what it's gonna take self inventory of yourself. Don't hide behind your marriage. I'm gonna say that again. Don't hide behind your marriage and make it your husband or your wife fault the reason you act the way you do. You've been crazy before you got married. <laughs> and you know it. You know you've been crazy before you got married and now you're trying to put it on your husband. <laughs> so if I know I've been a certain way, you know what? That's killing this relationship. Because why? I believe this relationship is a jewel and I don't want to take my spouse for granted. So what? I'm going to do whatever I need to do within myself to change. Because what? I want this relationship to work. Cause it's, and I always told my wife, it's enough crazy women out there. I feel like I got me a jewel. I ain't trying to go through that process no more. I done found one. So let's use, and a lot of times it takes the man making the first step. You know what? I see some areas in me that I need to tighten up on. <laughs> I see some areas in me that I need to tie it on. So you know what? I'm going to work those areas out. By you doing it, and the, the, one of the best things I learned in marriage is to let the, let the, let the uh, MJ, MJ, bro, bro, you need to calm down. You need to calm down. One of the greatest things I learned as a husband is, you know what? I allow the Holy Spirit to do his job. Because it's his job to convict the world of sin. Exactly. He know what she dealing with. Now some stuff you need to point out. Yeah. <laughs> some stuff you need to point out as a man. But some things you got to depend on the rule. Because he said, if you just be quiet and let me do my job. I work on her. I get her to where she need to be. All that attitude, a certain type of way, I'm going to handle it. And you let him handle it. You understand what I'm saying? But you do set boundaries. I'm going to say that. I say when we was in, when we was dating, and I had my own apartment and had all that. And we got upset by something. And she called herself mad. And walked out slamming my doors. <laughs> so you know what? I called her. I called her and said, you know, I know we upset right now. Slam my door. I said, okay, I ain't say nothing at the moment. I said, we talked. We got it straight. And I said, you know what? I understand we was upset. But this is it's my house. You don't go around slamming no doors that are at a house that ain't yours. Now, women, to be honest, they like that. They can act like they don't want a man to be a man. But inwardly, they like sometimes when they put it in their place a little bit. You know what I'm saying? That's how he, he ain't. Because they don't want, don't, no woman want no man that she can run over. No real one that she can move. Like, we, he talked to me like that. He said that. I ain't like it, but. <laughs> he a man. Man to a man. But you know what I'm saying? But then, like I said, setting boundaries. 
<laughs> Even when we got upset, we had to be like, you know what? As the man starting first, because the responsibility gonna always be on us. I had to be like, you know what? We got to have different methods about how we handle things when we get mad. It ain't all. It ain't always time to talk about it right then. Mm -hmm. You see how I don't raise my voice right. when I'm upset with you, but when you upset, you going in. We got to rectify that. I'm keep showing you. I'm trying to keep my eye. It might have been one point we were going at it. But then it had to be a point, you know what? You see that I'm trying. I'm working on me. How can you not respond to that? Mm -hmm. like, oh, okay. You modeled that for me first. And I had to realize it. Well, okay, that's you can handle it. I can't work with that. I can't work with that. I appreciate that. You modeled that for me. So some things we had to realize, and I had to learn, like the Bible says, you learn your wife according to knowledge. I had to learn that, um, that it's important for her to gather her thoughts before we talk about something. So sometimes we'll be like, you know what, I know something upset, and we didn't have those times that we talked about it, and I'm just like, I don't understand. And then, uh, you know how some of the women do, they want you to know how they feel before they tell you how they feel. With that, I was just like, well, baby, uh, I ain't no magician. I ain't no self-proclaimed prophet. You have to tell me specifically what I did that hurt you, so I won't do that no more. I ain't supposed to just know. We've just been together so long, you should know me. Mm-mm. I'm trying, but I ain't supposed to just know. So it's important... Exactly. And one thing that we did in the beginning, um, my wife, um, she had said, you know, you know what, let's let's write our thoughts down. And me, I first went, I ain't gonna write nothing down. I ain't got time. Talk. I want to talk. That was insensitive. But I was not a good communicator. I grew up. Knowing how to communicate, having family meetings and things like that, being able to express. I did not, not saying that we didn't, you know, we were in a cold house, but I just did not grow up in a world where I could put my words together and know what to say. And, you know, do you have so much stuff coming to your mind? Like, where did I start? <laughs> just jumbling it back with it. Uh, yeah, like uh, Leah so said, I'm gonna write you a four page letter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that was my way in the beginning, because I want to take time and put it together and make sure I'm putting it in the right spot. But sometimes you can say things and not come out well. You know what you mean, but it didn't come out that way. Mm -hmm. So that was my way So he, he worked with me on that. Sometimes you have to be. Yeah. And meet where they are. Yes. Meet each other where we are. I'm not where you are, you're not where I am. Let's find a meeting point in the middle and just try to work this thing. That's right. Because I had to I had to learn. I had to learn about that sensitivity thing and then I had to realize. I didn't realize how spoiled I was. My mama my mama and my sister, they spoiled me. Like I was <laughs> the next the youngest boy and everything my mama I wanted. Even if my mama eating a plate, I just would come and just get stuff off a plate and just eat. <laughs> my wife, she wasn't having that. She's like, uh-uh. You know. Don't go this. 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 Don't go <laughs> if y'all can get, if y'all somebody close that door, let people come in because the children are gonna be on on the team. All right, commandment number three. It says, "Don't take, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take of his name in vain." Don't take. The commitment of marriage in vain. Taking take wedding vows very serious. Again, don't take the commitment of marriage in vain, and take your wedding vows very serious. It shouldn't just be a ring that hold your your wedding your your marriage together. Different places that you go, you got to be committed to the relationship. Don't get married and you know you still got a dog spirit in you, and you know I done had people that. Slept with somebody else the day after they went. 
looking and the day before. And it's just like, man, why even get married if you know you're still going to be playing around? You know, get yourself together. Because you're going to have times where, you know, you might be working with women and uh, your wife might be working with men. And if you're a nice looking fella, that women going to be at you. You nice looking and you got wisdom. I guess it ain't many men out there got wisdom now. You talking right and committed to your relationship. And just especially if you're a, a teacher or a minister. They ain't just going to be attracted to you, but they're attracted to that anointing that's on you. So that's why even when, even, um, you know, when people see you in action, because women just drawn the power anyway. So when somebody functioning and operating in it, that's why some dudes can be the ugliest dudes alive. But because they can sing and they famous, they look, they're looking a little better. Like Phil. Seal look a mess to me. Seal like a seal. <laughs> it look a mess. But Wayne. You love Wayne? All of them. It look a mess. But don't take the take your, your, your marriage serious. Take the covenant of your marriage serious. And the best thing to do is not to put yourself in a position to mess up. Because can't nobody around and say they stronger than the men in the Bible. No. So what I'm saying, okay, right? I'm at work, yeah. and you know when that little thing is started, you ain't gonna not see no more attractive people because you got married. Women still gonna be fine, and men still gonna be fine. You know what I'm saying? So you, you might see somebody with some muscles out there, and I got used to be muscles, but you can't let that <laughs> you can't let that be by the, the, the whole of your marriage. But this is what I mean by not setting yourself up, putting your position. Right? You know. When you at work, right? Mm -hmm. You walk by, girl looking at you. You look at the girl. Nice. All right? So you just going about your business. Then all of a sudden, she come and find herself. And she come talk to you. And you talk to her. Then y'all develop a little friendship, right? Y'all talk. Just talk. And you talking to her about spiritual things. You keeping the spiritual is best to always bring your wife up. Right. We talking, you know, you know, you're like, yeah, man, my wife, she thinking about that. Or, you know, you got women out there to try you. And uh, please, when it comes to, if you come to your husband's job, there's one thing I could commend my wife for. Because when she come to my job, she be decked down. And you want the women to look at him and be like, you don't want to come up there with no house shoes on. Yeah, looking like this. You look <laughs> you looking crazy. And then the women be like, oh, man. I ain't got no competition right now. So you want to always be representing your husband when you go out. You know, it's different around the house. Everybody ain't trying to be pretty all the time when you're around the house. I understand that. Because I know I ain't. I ain't finna comb my head to lay in the bed with you. My beard might be like that, but hey, you got to love me. <laughs> I ain't gonna do all that just to be around the house. You know what I'm saying? So it's important. And take your wedding by five says, and this is what I mean about the person might say, well, you know, uh, that girl might say, you know, I need somebody, you know, to um, to follow me to the gas station so I can get some gas. And you might follow her to the gas station. Be like, oh, I left some at the house. Can you follow me to the house for a minute so I can get some? Mm -hmm. Now, you can just be Go like, you know, I'm trying to be. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <I'm sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> so when you feel that thing started, first you got to fight that thing. Because everybody in this family is dead. And then, exactly. You can tell when somebody likes it. But don't put yourself in the position of saying, because you might, you might go in that house and she might be like, well, I got to go get something. And she come out naked. And you like, hell mercy. It's not a bounce. <laughs> you better you run. Like if you can bounce at that time. You left I got in the house now. You talking about trouble. So. Don't put yourself in the position to sin and you won't sin. You had anything else on that? <laughs> Say that again and say it loud. Say, even if you are having a problem at home, don't talk to a member of the opposite sex. Or nowadays, a member of the same sex. Excuse me about what's going on because then that gives them an opportunity to say, okay, well, 
if you're having financial problems at home, let me just give you this money and then mm-hmm. you can go right. out and get your hair done. And you can go right. out and get pictures going to the right. family because, like I said, we're looking for stability. Right. I mean, that's just it's not wise anyway. I think you know, just, you know, that we can't share things with if you are in a situation, but it's best to just get into a habit of talking to each other about whatever it is. Because even when you're talking to someone else about um, your situation, you have a family or something like that, you then put your spouse in the negative light that you know, they might not be able to overcome. <laughs> And they might start looking at and not respecting your spouse as much. Y'all got to get together, but it's to my mind that mm-hmm. you was kind of, you know, he was awful to me, I mean, sibling or whichever. So get into a habit. That's something we had to learn. I, we got, and that was when we were dating. Because I would have a friend that I would talk to about things, and they would just always basically hate me because they weren't in a good right. situation. Right. So they tried to tell me some crazy stuff. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, we need, I'm just going to talk to him about it. I'm just going to go ahead and talk to you. Family don't forget. That's yeah, say it again. Family ain't going to never forget. You going to talk to your problems to, to your family, you you and the spouse got over it, and they still hold it back in back of their head. That's right. Remember when we, uh, uh, she ain't buying no food in the morning. She ain't buying no food and she was hungry. I said, that's still back in the head. Seriously, like, you're late. Like, yeah. I'm right, looking at you like, 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 um, like you ain't resolved, but it's being resolved. It's right. Right? right. right. So, I mean, you don't, you can't involve the right. party, especially your family. You got to keep this thing um, just fixed right. inside before you try to bring it out. Exactly. Right. 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 Like I said, it's going to cause problems. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. That's right. Don't talk about it. Let's testimony. Don't talk about it. That's right. Still. That's right. And that's going to lead us uh, lead us to the next point, commandment number four. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days should I labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord our God. How can we make that into a marriage commandment? Always take, and boy, this will help you, always take at least one day out of the month to spend time with just each other and honor the memorial of the relationship. Where sometimes we can get so busy, and, and sometimes uh, like with stuff going on now, me and my wife, it's hard. We got four kids right. now. It's hard to find somebody to watch all four. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's real. Because we know, like I said, our eyes was our ministry. So sometimes we do have to kind of give up sometimes. We do have to be okay and give up sometimes. And, and you know, people don't care what we think about them. as far as when they're doing too much. Exactly. It's like, okay, I need to pull it back. You're all keeping your ears open. Okay. Okay. But when it comes to us, like us that have children, sometimes we just have to get a little bit more creative with our time. Maybe we cannot go out to eat or something like that at the moment, or maybe we can get someone to get get the children. So what we'll do, we'll put the children to bed early, and we'll try to watch a little bit of something, you know, just hang out in the living room, and, and just, just have the, the special quality time, just us. Exactly. You know, so you just have to be creative with your time. Doesn't never be like that always. That's right. Children grow up so fast. That's right. So that that's that's very important uh, to do that to spend that time because even when I first came into this truth and um, my wife, boy, she was a truth because all I was doing is studying. <laughs> I come home, hey baby, I'm on a computer study. I wake up in the morning, I'm studying. I go, uh, <laughs> that's all I was doing. And uh, I didn't realize how much it was taken for her because she was stuck with the children. I'm trying to go in different places, and I'm cheering where you at. They where you at. Then I had to realize, you know what? Because I was like, I'm with the children at the time. You stay home with your children, you already know how it is. Exactly. And you're trying to keep them away, especially when once your husband is home, you know you got some relief somewhere. But you can't use that relief, you know. So it's, it's, yeah, I didn't understand that at first. I'd be like, man, I'm come home for work. And then time I get in the house, she passed me the chair. Like, now I got to get ready for my second job. And I didn't understand it until I stayed home with them children for a few days by myself. I was like, oh, Lord, have mercy. These children, here. Hurry up and get home, please. <laughs> but take a time out for yourself, Um, even if you're letting grandparents watch the children. That's why it's good to have community also too. So you can um, have, you know, brothers and sisters that'll watch your children so y'all can go out and do something. Also take out one day a month to have do a state of the marriage. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh, they upset in there. 
That boy ain't playing. <laughs> Dude, take one day out the month to do the state of the marriage address. Yes. And what is the state of the marriage? Okay, I'm coming to my wife. How am I doing as a husband? Don't use that time to Yeah. And she doing the same thing. How am I doing as a wife? Because there's a lot of stuff that we was able to talk through before it got bad. Like, baby, when you said that last week, that really hurt me. Now, I'm going on. I didn't know that hurt your feelings. But then the next two weeks come, and then, you know, you get mad by two pace left right here, or you get mad by the, well, all I did was went in there and turned something in the refrigerator, and you going crazy about that. It ain't about what you did right there, but it's about how you hurt her feelings over here. So that's why it's important to want, at least one time out the month, let's sit down and do it instead of a marriage address. What are some things that I can do better as a husband? Uh, that's what we had to do where I had to realize, okay, I need to do something else. I realized that I was taking too much time studying and taking too much time doing this. How can I work this thing out where I can, when I get home, it's family time. Mm -hmm. So I, that, that took me getting up early uh, some mornings and digging in or waiting to everybody go to sleep before I get in or trying to get it done before I get home. So when I get home, I can spend time with the family. So having a state of the marriage address where you talk about marriage issues. Now, initially when it start off, you might be mad. Because she's going to say some stuff. And that's why you have to, and he's going to say some stuff. That's why it's important to learn what ear you listening with. Either you're going to listen with an ear of offense or an ear of defense. How do I know that? When I hear this and I ain't even let you finish what you're saying, I'm getting defensive already. Because I'm trying to defend myself. Or offense. I'm getting offended by what you said. And I ain't even heard what you said. That's why it's important. To try to understand before being understood. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again. Mm -hmm. Try to understand before being understood. I'm going to listen to get your full point of view. Because if I cut you off, right. I'm saying stuff and I ain't even understood what you said to me yet. Right. What you was hurting by. So I'm going to try to understand how you feel first and respond to what you're saying. Not react. But find a way to respond in a in a um, you know in a good way so your right. your feelings won't be hurt. And this is a good way to start off that conversation. Bread, meat, bread. Yes. Bread, meat, bread. Start off with a praise. You talk about the meat. You end with a praise. Then <laughs> <laughs> it got hit too. Start off with a praise. I can still throw it in that you don't know it. Start off with a praise. Hit it with the meat. You end with a friend. A sandwich effect. Yeah. So this what this one of the things that I would do. Well, baby, you know, um, I got something, you know, serious that we need to talk about. Um, you tell us something about, you know, how you love being in a relationship and how everything is flowing, everything is going, uh, is going good. But the issue is. I really want you to hear my heart and what I'm saying because I want this relationship to develop and grow. So I want you to hear the heart of what I'm saying. And then you go into whatever it is. And then you end up like, look, I'm not saying this to cause no contention or anything in the relationship. But I'm saying this because I want our relationship to develop and I want our relationship to grow. So it's important to have a state of the marriage address and be careful how you present yourself in the marriage. All right. Let's go to the next. Anybody want to add anything on that? All right. We almost done. Commandment number five. Under thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long in the land which the Lord thy God have given thee. Honor the relationship and sow seeds and sow seeds that can enrich your relationship long term. So anything that I can do to honor the relationship and sow seeds uh, to enrich this relationship. And what am I doing to seeds to enrich the relationship? It's everything we just said. Taking time out with your family. Sometimes uh, just surprising her. It ain't got to be a special day. I want to honor you on another day. We're going to have a Mother's Day. Me and all the children out, we're going to honor you being the queen of the house. Honor you being the mother of this house. I'm going to come bring home your favorite. Sometimes it can be small stuff. I know my wife, she like her favorite type of candy. Sometimes I might just come home and surprise us with that candy. And when I sow in the hub, I re 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 reap the fruits. 
Oh, that's always. I think when we see our husband showing some type of effort, appreciate the effort. He's like, that's all you give me? Some pain? Oh, man. Kill the man. Good night. Appreciate the effort that your spouse is trying to do, um, you know, any kind of acting. It's the best in the series. It's important to know the love language. I don't know if y'all need to get it. Mm -hmm. You have a different love language, so if you know what your spouse's love language is, then that can also help you too. If my mind is doing things. So, you know, he might clean up around the house. If I'm at work and he's off or whatever, he's working night shift, and he clean up around the house, well, he, I'm sure he don't do it enough to get a little extra extra, but that does Why not? the air. <laughs> but that does the air, and I come home to a clean house, so I don't have nothing else to do that give me a little more strength. Come on now. You yeah, don't need to the house. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so it's important, like she said, to learn the love languages. If y'all haven't uh, checked that out, that's a good oh, this presentation oh. finna go down. <laughs> if you haven't read that book or, or looked at that, that's important uh, to find out what your love, your wife's love language is. All right, let's keep going. Don't kill the innocence of your relationship. Doing things that, you know, no would kill the innocence of it if... Um, Y'all, your relationship is innocent and saying it's starting out fresh. Don't go out and do something that can kill the innocence. Like going out and cheating on your spouse, doing something crazy that you could have avoided because it's killing the trust factor in your in your relationship. You understand? So you have to be careful with killing the, the innocence of the relationship and doing things that you know that's contrary to your relationship. All right? Or you have a friend that husband cheating on them then you come home looking at your husband crazy right. he been gone too long where you been why you had to go over there you see what I'm saying you don't let that transfer into your relationship because you know you got a good man or you know you got a good wife you know what I'm saying yeah, because misery love company, so they they want everybody to complain about their relationship. They'll run to your business too. And they'll run to your business to everybody. Before you know, you done confided in somebody. Not everybody know. All right, commandment number seven. We almost done. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Do not commit to desire or love anything that can destroy the relationship. It's important to weed out all these things that can be relationship destroyers. Um, Y'all name some relationship destroyers. Some things that can possibly destroy a relationship. Facebook. Oh, yeah. Facebook. I give you an example. I give you an example on Facebook. You know now, on Facebook, you might have unknown people send a request, right? And be some woman that got some revealing type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? And one day, and I get them all the time, so I just be deleting. So one day, and I usually scale, well, this particular day I was just going through, I was at jobs, so I really wasn't supposed to be on Facebook, but I was on there looking at something. And I seen a friend request, and there's a lady had a head wrap. So I like, oh, boom. When I clicked on it, well, after my, I, I hit friend, I hit confirm. And then after that confirm, the woman had, oh man, bosoms and all that hanging out, some short on. And it went to my wife. So she called me like, bro, this what we doing? You got a new friend? And I, looked, I said, oh no. I said, baby, baby, you know now. <laughs> yeah. Because exactly. the main thing, the embarrassment of a look, my husband befriending women that's showing revealing thing, it must be something he dealing with. You know what I'm saying? What could be some other relationship um, straws? You said Facebook. I said social media in general. Yeah. Social media yeah, in general. Yeah, sometimes we you know, spend too much time on social media in general. Even right. if you ain't doing it like, um, with malicious intent. Mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. You're right. Yeah. Um, finances. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, there's a lot of things. I tell you one thing that had me um, pornography. 
It happened in my relationship. Um, something that I, I was watching because it was it was something I grew up with. I grew up with um, watching pornography, and I got to the point where you know I loved it. I had to watch pornography before I went to bed, and watching mm-hmm. pornography start going to masturbation. So I would masturbate before I go to bed. Mm-hmm. So then when we was dating, it got to the point where I didn't really want relationship. We, you know, she come over, we was in relationship, and she want to do all that talking. Uh-uh, you know, we come over because <laughs> I was feeding that beast, so that's all I wanted. Yeah. After I got that, then got off, now we can talk about all that. But you can get off and get sleeping now. Right. She get to talking. <laughs> I'm not that. But let me tell you what happened, right? I got delivered, got saved, and all that was cool. But then, my wife had to go somewhere for a week. Now, Mo, you got to know your spouse. My wife know me. She she know that I can't. And when it get past three days, I got to have something. I got to have something, like baby, and tell them about that ministry. The side ministry. Sometimes you got. To. Yeah, I take freebies. All the freebies you want to give me. You ain't got to be into it. Because <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, exactly. Sometimes we 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 intense, and my wife be like, "I know what's wrong with you. Come here." She doesn't know. She know. <laughs> you know, I need something. I just come right on all down. <laughs> but let me tell you though. So she left and she was gone about a week or two. And man, that thing started messing with me because I knew it was coming. It started messing with me and I had the tendency, you know, you know, you just scrolling through YouTube and then all of a sudden something pop up and you click on it. And then you that and went to other stuff and now I'm back on twerk videos of pornography. So I'm watching this, and then it got to the point where I was, my body responded to what, and y'all know, I'm, I'm free, I talk about anything. Right. My body started responding to what I seen rather than hurt. So we would, by times, about to get intimate, and I couldn't get up and be strong as I want because my body was strictly on the type of women I was seeing here. Right. See what I'm saying? So my body started responding to that, and then we wonder like, what's going on? I'm looking like, Hey! <laughs> Body, I fell in love with the release right. rather than my wife. Mm-hmm. Even though I love my wife and everything, but then my relationship. Oh. Oh. Yes, yeah. My relationship got bit off, oh, Mama. You okay? My relationship started getting built on just the release rather than the relationship. Then I had to start realizing that, and you know what? I got to learn to control that. And I had to really go through deliverance. I had to um, really sit down and be prayed for. Uh, you know, even had to have some things cast out of me. Because when I exposed that secret, it released that stronghold. You understand what I'm saying? And then I, exactly, then I was able to rid myself of that and let that go. But I was, I was so entangled in that thing, and now... I'm careful about what I watch, about what I see, right. you know, and I, I have to control myself and be like, you know what, Mo, you got to get it together. You can't be trying to have it all the time and all that type of stuff because that's showing you that you in love with the release. You got to be able to spend time with your wife and just spend time with her in the bed because <clears throat> I was like, we in this bed, we in this bed. <laughs> and then, you know, a woman is different, so. You know, a man can be ready all the time, but a woman mind got to get into it. So, you know, she want to sit up, you know, and talk and get all intimate with talking. And, you know, and I'm looking like, baby, we got to get up in the morning. You know, let's uh, go and get this in. 
Old pastor said, "Man is like the microwave, but woman is like the prophet." That's right. That's right. And that's something that I learned. You got to talk to her all day, calling her, getting her mind ready, doing nice stuff for her, getting her ready. Then by the time you get ready at the house, boy, she ready. And when she read, I, I heard this from an old man. It's no cherry. That woman can look up way longer than you can look down. Some of y'all will get that tomorrow. That's <laughs> just the truth. She gay. She gay. It's just the truth. An old man told me that before we got married. I ain't get it at first. He was like, Mo. Like you gonna be mad all your life, bro. <laughs> Don't be acting like y'all gonna get divorced tomorrow. If they take your time, a woman can look up way longer than you can look down. So it's important to have that intimacy in your relationship. Um, verse eight: Thou shalt not steal. Don't steal the integrity of your relationship with stuff like that. I stole the integrity. And that's something that I was dealing with. Now she ain't beat me up or tell me where you supposed to be. You are preaching and teaching. You doing all this stuff and look at what you struggling with. She ain't eat me up like that. But she looked at the heart of what I was dealing with and understood that I had an issue with this um, uh, even before we got into a relationship. And it hurt her now. It hurt her. And we had have, um, you know, we had talks about it and different things like that. But um, that's part of the relationship. I had to build that integrity back up. You understand what I'm saying? Now, I don't make your husband feel like, well, he got to prove something to me. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to, because like the scripture said, that you give mercy, that you may obtain mercy. Right. But you don't know when. One thing about us, most I always keep me and her in check. He keep us in check. I can't dig in her on nothing. Because when I try to do that, a few weeks later, I've been to did the same thing. The most I'd be like, you see how you can't go crazy about that little moment right there? Because I have you do the same thing and have you mess up. Right. So, you have something on that? When we first got married, this is an example of that. When we first started realizing, thank you, mm -hmm. this is what I have. Um, when we first got married, it was like, you know, we're learning to get your account together and everybody's swiping and, you know, we're learning how to have an account together. So, we weren't really kind of communicating. Anyway, he ended up doing something with overdraft the account. It was a little bit. I was just like, oh, you this on that account. I had this set on, I had this on that. Gosh, you know, just really like make sure he understands. Don't do that again. <laughs> I think two weeks later, I overdraft. He overdraft like some change or whatever. Or like thirty dollars or something like that. I overdraft it like over a hundred dollars. Oh my god. Right. I don't know what happened. But no, I didn't make it happen like that to humble me. It's like you was all real. Mm -hmm. And now you have done it to the extreme. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things that happen, I make sure that I check the way that I receive whatever something is wrong. Yeah. Because I can get in that same boat. Exactly. And when, down the road or you know, you have to sow seeds of mercy for each other. That's right. And God been a God on them enough. You ain't got to be on that. So you got on me last week. Look at you. Right. Look at what you did now. You know what I'm saying? He been dealing with it. I know, baby. It's okay. We all grown. We learning together. All right. Verse 9. Not, yeah. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Never lie to your spouse or do not lie to yourself about the state of your marriage. I tell people all the time, look, man. If you know your marriage is struggling, don't let having a perceived image make you stop reaching out for help. Because we can all be hanging out and doing different things, but you know, you know what, man? I'm failing. But you know, as we do, as people that, you know, that are, that are, are, are believers are, are going to church or different ones like that, we always, when somebody asks you, how you do it? I'm blessing. How to pay? I'm good. Right. You ain't always good. And it ain't until you reach out to somebody that you can get the wisdom for help. I would never sit there and let my relationship die. And that's why in my relationship, I got brothers, young brothers around me that was been married longer than me. And I got older counsel of elders that I can go to and be like, you know what? I need some wisdom on this. And I started off with that. But then it started dwindling down where every conversation now been between me and my wife and I had to go to nobody else. But I still have those as outlets, though. Because brothers still need outlets to grow and sisters still need outlets to grow also, too. So you can see and judge your own thinking process. 
am I right thinking like this? And don't get nobody that's going to agree with you. Right. Get some with somebody that's going to challenge you. Right. Like, you know what? Sis, you was wrong. You did. Don't be like, yeah, I seen what he did. You right, girl. You should have did more than that. No, if you my friend, you need to point out areas that I was wrong in. You know, and areas that I need to grow in. So, never lie to your spouse. Worst thing you can do is just start telling lies to your spouse. Because you whoop your children by lying to you. Right. And if you if you start lying to your spouse, then it, it kills the relationship. Don't not kill the relationship like lies. No. So you want to keep truth. And the main thing is keep friendship in your relationship. My wife is my home. I mean, we can kick it. We laugh. We have a good time. We don't make things up tight. We do. We just have fun together. And I can tell you, I uh, and I watch people. I tell this last trip that I went on with Josh and Jamey, I said, they are friends. Because I watched how they was kicking it together, movies they was talking about together. You can just tell that it ain't no put on, ain't no show. It was genuine. So it's important to have fun. Don't be uptight. And don't be about ministry all the time. Well, you saying all type of dusters and dowers at the house. and Without <laughs> You know, you quickening at the house and stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> you you want to talk to that? No, I just told y'all to laugh this morning. You just kept me from the room. Well, sometimes we get tired of each other, but sometimes we get cold. You know, sometimes we get cold. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So it's important. It was like some good inside jokes. Like, yeah. You know, like, because see, I did more as with this, and I was like, you ain't getting like this. <laughs> like, people have no idea what we're what we're talking about. Like, oh, okay. Like, even just now, like we have so many like like TV show references. Like, yeah. Even just now, something that you said, we were just both just like laughing. But I know people are like, <laughs> but you know, so it's good to it's good it's important for you. Not just good, it's important mm-hmm. for you. Be Friends. Exactly. Because exactly. the worst thing you marry with somebody and y'all ain't even friends. No. Right. Like if y'all wouldn't marry, y'all wouldn't even hang out. Right. Ooh, right. That's real bad. Like I wouldn't even hang with this dude. <laughs> like, oh God. You just don't know what's going to happen in life. Um, a lady actually told me about this one time. She was on our advisory board. She her husband was away um, last year. And they haven't married for 40 years. And 30 of those years she spent as his caregiver. Wow. Her husband wow. got sick, like not too long after they got married. So she spent the majority wow. of their their marriage being his caregiver, mm. not even truly being. Wow. You know, when you say sickness and health, you just don't know. Right. Exactly. You know which way it's gonna go? So the majority of their marriage being his caregiver, yeah. and um, and watching his health decline and him having um, dementia, not even mm. really oh, knowing wow. who she was and. Her still loving him and caring for him. I'm just like, you know, you just have mm. to give the most high thanks because you really yes. don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So, especially right. if you yes. ain't friends mm. and now you, you, you're you sick and I got to take care of somebody that I don't even really like mm. but because it was fun in bed a couple of times and that's why I married you. That's mm. not. That's right. That's not that's a good right. foundation for marriage. You know that's what I mean? Right. So, if I don't like you, I never know why I take care of you, but now I'm stuck. That's right. Yeah. You, know you can't why? just build your marriage out mm-hmm. of sex because that ain't a that ain't a big mm-hmm. thing. Now it is a good thing, and ain't no be- better feeling in the world than sex. Now we'll say that, but it ain't the foundation of your marriage. And concerning sex, y'all know me. I'll say what else. Concerning I'm sex, <laughs> I will be good. Concerning sex is important. Me and my wife, we had to learn each other about it. I had to learn what she liked, and she had to learn what I liked. You know, sometimes you get in the heat of the moment, you just like the stuff. <laughs> then I do it the next, like, like you're like, hey, man, do it, man, do it, man, do it. But now she's like, no, I just was in the moment then, but I really didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't get proper, like, woman, I only went, you were, no, you won't like this, no. She had to learn my body, and I had to learn her body. We had to be honest with each other. Oh, you like that right there, okay. We're going to work that out. We're going to work that out. She found out what I like. I found out what she like. And even when it came to... According to knowledge, right? According to knowledge. I'm going to say this. Hey, Morris. Morris, you should have saw your face when you said, oh, you like that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I love it. She like it. I love it. I'm going to write this down. Do this. Do this and do this. <laughs> you got that on camera. Right? <laughs> 
Yes, sir. It's a combination. But um, and then it's, it's important because that also has a lot to do with uh, because you don't want your woman all your marriage having sex with you and she never climax. It ain't nothing for men to climax. That's true. We right. climax. We be on go ready. Right. But uh, <laughs> you want you want to get your woman to the point where she can climb down. First thing you know, out at first thing you know, I got a little. Uh, a little prideful, she because at first she wasn't climbing. I was like, uh, well, you didn't learn your body. I know my body. I know my body. I know how to get there. <laughs> but we had to, we had to work that thing out and <laughs> work with each other. And I had some things I had to learn, and now it just it, it ain't no problem. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go say that. Keep going. So that's important. He clapping on that. See, that's that's how you came here. So that's important. <laughs> but all that is important, communication and talking to each other. For all that. All right. Last thing, last two things, and we done. Ooh, go ahead, baby. Just add to that. Like we were talking about the whole talking thing. You all do have to spend some time wearing this out, even if that, you don't care about it. Throw us up the rooms, and have one more dog. I done mastered that. Yeah. <clears throat> well, you gotta say, for real, baby. Wow. <laughs> She did yeah, what now? Yeah. Really? Man. Yeah, so they said, so that's something right there, baby. That's something right there now. <laughs> And I had to realize too, you know, it's important to give them an outlet where um I ain't did it in a while now. <laughs> well <laughs> I would save up Oh go ahead. I know that you've been doing stuff for ministry so I don't get away with that. Exactly. But I would save aside maybe, um, especially when stuff was tight. I was like, I can say, I can at least try to save twenty five dollars every two weeks, or uh, twenty five dollars a week if I can, or even if it takes twenty five dollars a month, so I can get to a hundred dollars. So I can just go home and say, baby, here, take this hundred dollars and go do what you want to do with it. Go buy some mini club, whatever you want to do, do with it. And then she would go out with no kids. I'm watching the children. She out there just shopping. I got this thing. I got this. And she come on showing me. Show them then the thing is she go out and get stuff up and then she come home with cheer and stuff. Yeah. Hey, man, I thought you get you some. <laughs> but when she get back home, she ready. And she happy. And you're gonna have a good time. That's real talk. But I will say about you tomorrow. Well listen, part of part of our problem is men, you know, the most high men should be problem solvers. Right. That's the way your mind works. So your mind is anytime, like, even when you talk to another, you talk to another. You have a conversation. You listen to him the whole time. Like, I want to talk to you. <laughs> That's real. That's real. Like, oh, this is what you need to do. And then everyone's like, oh, 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 yeah. You know, that's the way we operate. So a lot of times we deal with our wives. The wives are telling us about stuff. We like, okay, how many fix this? Mm. But they don't really want that fix this when you hear them out. Right. Yeah. right. So that's that balance you got to constantly keep in your head. Like, yeah, they, they need, they need a. Uh, Ball you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> they need to get all this stuff out. It's just what's my hero. I mean, I gotta have it when my wife starts that. I, I ask her, I'm like, and do I have my listening ears or do you want me to problem solve? Man, that's good. That's like, good. I just need you to listen first. And I'm like, okay, I'll listen. And then I start to about my ideas. Right, right. Then I say, You ready for me problem solve yet? And she's like, No, I was like, Okay. Good. That's good. That's good. Mm-hmm. So that that'll help. That'll help you because you gotta remember, a man uh, mind, a woman mind is like a seven lane highway. She always thinking. She always running because she she just been gifted with that. She think about a lot of things. She think about ends and, out, and she she got to be a multi mm-hmm. A man mind like a trail in the woods. <laughs> we we going straight. We know all the landmarks there, <laughs> and we know how to get back. So you can't expect her to think like you, and you can't expect him to think like her. Cause that's why the Most High made male and female, 
and and you become one flesh. You have to go to him to understand her, right. and she has to go to him to understand you. So that's just that's important to understand. You're not going to think alike. You two different people, right. two different essence. And the Most High made it like that. So when you become one, you become him, because you got a part of him that's the woman and a part of him that's the male. All right. Uh, anybody else want to add? Elder, y'all want to add anything? Well, we've been married 36 years. And- yeah, y'all need to be up <laughs> Wow, that's beautiful. So, out of everything that you said, there's one thing I want you all to know what marriage is all about and what makes marriage last. Kinship. Mm. Don't look at that as just your wife or just your husband. That's my kinfolk. Mm. We, we, are, we are one. That's right. And, you know, we've been through a lot of these retired military, Marine Corps and stuff. And oh, wow. We've had obstacles. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when people try to come between us, I let them know. That's my kinfolk. <laughs> you can have them. You can find you want. <laughs> we got a, a kinship. That's right. Us. That's beautiful. You know, and uh, another thing, too, as far as um, people interfering in the marriage, you know, outside relationships, how I have established that in my life alone is ego. Mm. You know, we all think we got an ego and then people have <coughs> egos that they got to please. That tells a person when you go out and you cheat or you do things that you know is not within a marriage, it's because you're not sure of yourself. Mm. Because when you look in that mirror every morning before you walk out your door, you should know who you are. You should already know if you're beautiful, if you're ugly, if you're just All right now, all right. When you walk out there and some man come up to you and say, you are so beautiful. You know what I tell my right now, how I look? That's not going to work for me. I already know I'm smart. I already know all these little things. You think you can feed my ego, bro. Because my parents, I had parents that instilled that in us. You know, you don't have to be anything. You just need to have some knowledge. You know, you need to know yourself as a person and respect yourself that's as a good. person. That's good. Yes, ma'am. You will not let another person invade your life. That's, that's, like that's, be, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. You want to add? I consider my wife my best friend. Mm. I mean, uh, I don't want, I don't want to ever have to hurt my best friend. That's mm, right. Boy, that's you know, it. That's I, it. I think about it a lot of times. Uh, you know, you tempted as a male, you tempted all the time. You see beautiful. That's women. right. Uh, you know, I mean, let me see beautiful guys out there, and uh, you you just gotta kindle that relationship. You gotta tell your wife, hey, you look nice. I that's love right. you. That's uh, right. You know, I mean, how was your day? You know, you gotta communicate, and I think the communication portion of it. It'll make things all right. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Uh, when tough, been, been, I ain't gonna say it always been a, a, a pile of roses. You know, mm-hmm. I've done some things that you know, I, 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 I part of growing. Mm-hmm. Of me, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And um, the thing is, is uh, it always come back on you. Mm-hmm. you know I mean? So when I got into the Word and, and, and understanding, you know what I mean, what the Most High has for me. Mm-hmm. The thing is, is I just can't go out there and do anything. That's, Ooh, I, that's I it. That's right. And, right. and not expecting to receive it in return. Oh, mm-hmm. so. so what it is is I always think about it, you know what I mean? I pray about it, and a lot of times, if it's something bad, it'll go away. That's right. right. You know what I mean? Right. But if it's something I really want to do for someone or something like that, then I go on and do it. But the thing is, is uh, just she's she's been my best friend, you know what I mean? In December fifteenth, it's thirty six years, and I hope. Well, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. We all trying to get there. All <laughs> trying to get there. Mother, you had something in the back you want to add? Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's exactly right. That's that's all that that is uh, extremely important. Yes. Of stuff we got to know if we want these uh, on our relationship um, to work and to excel. How long have you been uh, married, Mom? March will be forty-four years. Woo! Beautiful. <laughs> And just to, just to let people know, um, we just been doing this in ministry, so it just go along with it. The elderly women, women we call mother. So yeah. that's why you might hear me say, because right. one mother got mad when I said this. I was like, yeah, how you doing, mother? Father! How you doing? 
<laughs> My bad. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but we call mothers mothers, and then we call uh, we call the males either the elder or we call them dad. We normally call them dad. So we'll say dad, this or dad, this or mother, this or mother, this. And then we call each other brother and sister. No, no, no. Yeah. Oh, no, I mean, that's, that's, that's news out here. Right? Exactly. Yeah, I don't know what you also. So that's that lady. She kind of snapped over, but you know it's good. And I want to say something else. There's say also that. like a uh, a sense. This may not be the right word, but I was going to say like a sense of ownership mm-hmm. in a marriage too. Because mm-hmm. like if somebody like says something after Josh, Josh already knows I'm like one thing crazy. Oh my goodness! Come on now. <laughs> and so like you know, well, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like ready to let fight. You know, if you if you, you, if you <laughs> come after I'm him, saying, yeah. you know. Really, I feel like you're coming after me. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because we're one. Y'all must right. be good friends. <laughs> <laughs> so if you say something about negative about right. Josh or try to paint him in a in a wrong light, right. I'm ready to go. Like yeah. we we don't fight. <laughs> well, well, you gonna fit? Y'all fit right in. Cause I call my wife. She, I call all them hood girls. <laughs> My wife, Sabrina, and sister, uh, Nakonda. <laughs> them girls sweet, but they ready to roll up. <laughs> 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 Let's go. Let's go. Them girls don't play, man. <laughs> they would be up in your, in your face. But so it's just like. Feel comfortable, right. you know, saying any type of thing about yeah. your right. spouse. Right. Just to be right. saying it. You know, mm-hmm. and then. Coming to me with it. Right. Uh uh-uh, uh, you must be crazy. You're not gonna just say anything about about Josh. Whether mm-hmm. whether it's friends, family, because mm-hmm. I'll sit there sometimes around family and be like, Oh, we gonna fight. I need you to stop. <laughs> I need people to stop because it's like the wrong. You know, so, so <laughs> you know, so it it shouldn't be that your spouse feels comfortable people just talking mm-hmm. whatever about, mm-hmm. about yeah. you. Defensive yeah. about mm. your spouse because that's that's you. You guys are one. They they talking about you. They're not talking about. Mm. Oh, they talking about Josh. No, they talking about me. So mm. we have a problem. That's real. Especially if it's not true. Especially <laughs> if it's not true. Right. That's real. But so ain't nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's that line that's in y'all. But y'all ain't ain't nothing to fool with. I'm for real. You you find a woman really love man. She will fight. Nailing foot if that even makes sense <laughs> for that man. She don't play by him. You know what I'm saying? So it just it's important. It's important. It's important. You know, and um but it is, it's like like the elder say, it is important to give each other compliments, you know. Uh sometimes it's it's if I failed at that because you know, when you're getting ready to go, when you're trying to get dressed to go somewhere <laughs> and you're already bought late. And she got three different outfits. You told her, well, baby, that look good. I don't think I want to wear this. I'm... And I'm trying my best. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying my best. Like, baby, we got to go. That look good. I think, and then, boy, when I walk back in there and you taking that <laughs> off. <laughs> oh. Mmm. So that burned me up. It burned me up. We got them two cars. Move. Yeah, yeah, MJ, out. come on. <laughs> you got with me, MJ. We better go. So, I'm going to have you talk. Some of that is us, us brothers. We got to we got to do what we can to help too. Cause I used to I used to let her get them cheering together, get everybody together, and I'm going by my business. I got I got a call. I got to be at. I got to be there on time to play the to play the keyboard or do whatever. So I was gone. Now they realize, you know what? Before me, I start doing all that. Let me let her do her thing. Let me get these cheering together. Let me help get my son together, little women together. Even if I'm just saying, go do this and go do that. So it can help, so she can have the opportunity to do that. 
Now that's a problem with I done got the children together and we all in there waiting on you. That's a problem. Okay, you're right. Yeah. You go in these outfits and yeah. you go in these She can have to take a picture and send it to her friend on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Does this look okay? And they'll be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. <laughs> wow. But well, don't get no ideas. <laughs> no, y'all might be already doing it, but don't. <laughs> But I'm gonna say this one yeah, thing yeah. too. I tell this to um um my um, wife because we we joke together. So we'll go out and for somebody tried to holler at us, we'd be like, "You better get your game up." Well, I tried to holler at them, I'm looking good. Now I never know. I shut it down. And she'll walk around. She'll be like, "They were looking at me. I had head turned as I down. But we can play like that. Everybody can. Right. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I was like, then we play like that. I'm gonna get up there right now where he was at. I'll go find a grocery store and find them. Mm -hmm. We play like that. And when she tells me, dude was looking at her when she was pregnant, I was like, these, that's some nasty men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's true. But I want to say this. You <laughs> 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 It's important for women. Let me say this. Get y'all a jewel. Y'all might already know. But a man would take anything as you like him. Right. You can be walking in a stove. Right? And the dude say, hey, how you doing? And you say, hey. Oh, oh, she like me. I'm going to go holler at her. And all you did is said, hey. You know what I'm saying? Because dude's different. A woman will go on a date not knowing she don't like the dude at all. But she just wanted to get out. Right. Now that man thinking, okay, well, she must like me because we're going on a date. But I'm not, I don't like you at all. I just ain't been out in a while. Right. See what I'm saying? And that's just like, that's crazy. He paying for everything. But the thing is, you have to be careful with your responses and stuff like that. Because anything, brother going to want to holler at you. And all you did is say, hey, how you doing? And they're like, oh, okay. Hey, how you doing? And I'm going to follow that up. So it just it just good. Sometimes my wife, she get in a bruh state. They say, hey, I'm like, what's up, bro? And she keep going. They don't like that bruh. All right, commandment 10, com complete each other and do not compete with each other. That's right. Do not convert what others have. So don't be in your relationship, especially two people, especially if they ain't no divine order. You got two people in ministry. And a man trying to show the woman up and a woman trying to show, when I get up, ah, this will happen. See, you ain't spiritual at all. So when I get up, I bring the heavens down. And it's just like, I done seen it. Men and women competing with each other. About an anointing and about this and about that. That's crazy. That's all deal with titles, man, because you just get crazy in that. So you don't, you never want to make your wife, this is something my father told me too, you never want to make your wife think you way more spiritual now. I've always told my wife we're on the same level of spirituality because we can't be on different levels if we want. Correct. Mm -hmm. So by me being elevated, it's going to elevate her anyway. Right. And it might elevate her to levels that she's not ready to operate in yet, but then that's on the most high. Right. Understand what I'm saying? Because when he elevates, we both elevate. So then just when you have to be patient and take your time and pray. That she get to the level of where God wants y'all. And you don't be like, well, you need to go do this. You need to be doing that. You need to be doing this and need to be doing that. You have to uh, you have to really let let the most high. Because each elevation I got, even in my father ministry, every elevation I got, it was more pressure. Mm -hmm. At first, I was just the brother coming in at the door. Usher. 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 <laughs> then I learned the keyboard. Then I got saved and, and was over the prayer team. Then from the prayer team, then I took over the youth. Every time the elevation came, more pressure. Then over the youth, the head elder. Then I moved into this. And each elevation, it put more pressure on both of us because now it ain't no behind the scenes no more. We both in front. And people depending on me just like they depending on her. And I've never let somebody disrespect her. No. 
You see what I'm saying? Because you go to some churches and they disrespect the first lady. Or just talk all kind of crazy because I don't need none of this. I'm doing fine by myself. <laughs> I ain't got to do ministry. You know what I'm saying? If, if it's like that. Now, I have to do my call. My call more important than anything. But I will never let ministry become before my first ministry at home. Because if this tow up, I don't care nothing about this. That's the relationship I have. I'm not going to save the world in my house tow up. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? So it's a balance with everything. And don't convert what others have in the sense of you looking at your friend got the big house. They got the Lamborghini. They riding in the big truck. And y'all struggling. And you mad. Look at you. I ain't got me in no house. It's five years. We still in the same house. 18 years. We still doing that. And you ain't working. And you know, ain't neither one of y'all making that type of money yet. Right. You go out there and try to get a high vehicle. Now you're struggling. <laughs> and you're really mad. Because uh, when it comes to financial stuff, what love got to do with that? <laughs> you got to get the finances together. I'm telling you, so it's, it's important. Don't be convicting. You'll have your time. To get what you want. I know most women, they grow up with the Cinderella mentality, thinking she's going to get the castle. Just wait on your husband. Where, where he at? He, he trying to get you there. Take time. He going to get you in where you need to be. Yeah. Do the best you can with what you got. You know what I'm saying? And don't be convicting. Say, well, look, they got a new house, and they got to do your time coming. It's coming soon. That's it. Well, that's another reason why social media yeah, it's people living fraudulent lives yeah, on social media and talk about relationship goals and whatever. You're like, man, our relationship ain't like that. Your relationship is yours. Right. It's Correct. not theirs. Exactly. What they're doing is what they're doing, what you guys are doing, is what you're doing. Um, and what they say they're doing is not really what they're doing anyways. Well, That's, right. Right. That's real. That's real. Food up on Facebook, no food up, man. Food up, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. You're right. right. That's one thing we, we, we was not going to do is be fake. Mm -mm. I, I'm not finna step up and be preaching places. I know this is toe up at the house. I'll be like, well, Pop, I ain't preaching today. You need to come forth. Or even with this. if And that's why I was telling the brothers, even in, the mini, in our ministry now, what we're doing. And this ministry of rebirth, I was telling brothers, we have to um, implement a system of restoration because you don't never know what a brother might do or what he might struggle with or something that he might follow. So we need to have systems on what to do with that brother, even leaders, even me and Josh being leaders. Now, um, I'm looking to have generational integrity, right? right? But if something happened with one of the main leaders, what kind of restoration systems are we going to have? And that's what we need to be thinking about, that we're going to have in place to restore that brother. Okay, you need to sit down. We might have to send somebody to teach your um, your uh, your chapter for a while till we get you together. Because we don't want you thinking you can do this and you fine. We don't want this name amongst us. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want nobody putting me in the news about what you did over there. Talking about re-rebirth over here in, in Colorado, and you done went over and did something crazy. And talking about you under, uh-uh! <laughs> you even put my name under. <laughs> so we need to have systems, okay? This is what we, we have this type of problem. This is what we need to do. This is what we need to sit down. We need to rebuild you. If it takes a year to rebuild you, take you two years to rebuild you. If we need to sit you under some elders and get you under elderly people. When I mean by elders, I mean aged elders. They can sit down and season that might have struggled with some things and get you where you need to be. As you are serious. So that's something that we all need to be thinking about and um, implement. All right, this last thing. I'm going to do four things that men need in marriage. My wife's going to do four things that women need in marriage. Um, and a lot of times, all your arguments is based off these things. So women pay attention to me, and men pay attention to my wife. You want me to read them all off? Okay. All right, the four things that a man need. The one, number one thing that a man need is respect. Number one. Most of the time, we mad because we feel disrespected about something. It might have been something you said. A man need that like he need air. Especially brutal. Yeah, exactly. I mean, brutal kill you over some respect. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's important for women to give your husband, and I'm going to say this, and this, this thing is easier said than done. Y'all going to get y'all's too in a minute. Listen to what I'm going to say. 
Man, give him something to respect, but unconditional respect. Boy, that's hard. But that's what they need because that's how we breathe. Anytime we upset, if you look at the way you said something or did something, we saw that being disrespectful and di- uh, disrespectful, disrespectful, <laughs> and a man was shut down on you. Anytime a man shut down on you and be walking around quiet like that, he felt disrespected about something. Mm-hmm. And that's the point. You got to get past your independent state. Say, I don't care nothing about that. Well, he can do this and I can do this. Uh-uh. Let me slow down and see what I might have did that caused disrespect for him to be that way. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because it's something that I might have done because I want my husband to be right. at his full strength all the time. That's right. So if he's shutting down on me, let's talk about this. Let's see what I can get him respect. Nine times out of ten, he mad about something that he feel disrespected about. Because men need that. Right. All right. Number two, men need physical touch. Mm-hmm. We need body intimacy. We need sex, yeah. especially uh, get in your from your from the time your marriage first start on. Uh, when you get a little older, they my daddy now so you get a little older. Then you know you ain't want it as much. But we gotta have it. We got to add it. Br- brothers in my line. <laughs> you can't be going a week, two weeks, and your man ain't have nothing. Cause that's when we start having those spirits of uh, pornography start hitting us. And you'll be surprised how, man, that thing go way on you strong. You wasn't like, girl, you talking about, well, I'm going to punish him. I ain't going to get him none. He's going to go a whole month. And then you got this woman out here talking sweet to him, talking good to him, and now he's leaning more towards her because a man, a man functions off praise. He's going to lean towards praise. And I'm not talking about like praise and worship like you praising him, but giving him accolades. Boy, that do something for our ego. Our ego needs to be strong. You understand what I'm saying? It do. Our ego needs to be strong. You need to tell us. Because that's one thing with me and my wife. I tell you, I really wasn't no builder. I wasn't like, man, I ain't finna build that. We even call somebody that's already got it built. Finna build it. Ain't nobody got time. <laughs> but when she started in care, like, babe, I think you can do this. Just, just, just put this together and do that right there. And then she would give me all kind of praise. But I'm like, baby, you did that. Mm, mm, look at my favorite master builder. They did that. Oh, then I started. <laughs> yeah, all that type of stuff. And I started liking it. So, <laughs> so, what else I need to build in? You know what I'm saying? So, it's important. <laughs> you need to know how long your man can go. Because he's going to be mad because he ain't got that. It's going to come out in different areas. So, I need to know how, how long my man. Oh, okay. It had been three, four days. Come out, baby. Let's go and get this. Right. If it be a freebie, we'll take a freebie. But we just we need something. <laughs> we need something. When you have children. And all that type of stuff, you know, it'd be hard. And brothers, we got to not be hounds. You know that woman then got off work. She then went in there and cooked. Then she then dealt with them children. And she finally got down to sleep. And she tired. And now she laying down and you pulling on. You got you we got to use wisdom on that too. You know what I'm saying? You can't be just wanting it all the time and wearing her out. You know, you have to do what you got to do to help her out around the house and help her do different things to make things equal with each other. Especially if both of y'all work and then you really um, got to be a team with stuff. Mm-hmm. Both of y'all got to maybe cook and both of y'all got to maybe do this and both and just be a team. We're helping each other out. All right, and the last thing, a man needs his vision and goals to be supported. Because like the scripture says that um, he made Eve to be a help me. And man, when your wife if, if when your wife really find out what the vision of the home and where we going, they will get excited. And they would do all type of things to help it. But don't be one of them men that this week God told you something, then the next week it to change. And then a month after that, you're doing something else and you don't never complete it, nothing. Exactly. All you're doing is making decisions, but you're not managing the, the, the last decision you made. And I heard my mother say, you want to be in the perfect room of your husband's vision. You want to help the perfect thing. How perfect is that? Because that's right. So the four things that men need, women, we need respect, big time. We need physical intimacy. We need praise. And we need support of our vision. 
those are the areas that most of the arguments start from when a man is mad. You understand what I'm saying? So that's something that um, men need. And we're going to go with the four things that the women need. I'm just going to read them and let you respond on them. Is that what you said? I can't. You can't see it? Yeah, I can see it. I can see it. Oh. No, I see it. All right. So the number one thing um, that women need is intimacy, and that's intimacy in the mind and intimacy. emotional intimacy. and sensitivity. Intimacy, dealing with the mind, mm -hmm. e emotional, and sensitivity. And we talked about that. I mentioned that earlier. You know, when it comes to you know talking things or just things that you're interested in, that's intimacy. When we're talking about the things that I might be talking about. Interested in something or uh, sharing it with you or something I'm really passionate about. That's not time to be half hearted. When you show your, your interest in that, that, you know, it just creates. It doesn't seem to suck. If you show an interest in something, I don't know if you all see, see the website Pinterest. Sometimes you see some things like, oh, I'm interested in that. I would love to like to tell you. You get excited about something and you're like, oh, look at this. Look at this. Mm -hmm. See, those things don't help. <laughs> By faith. <laughs> even, even if it's one of her favorite shows and you don't care nothing about it. You right. know, sit down and watch it with her. One thing that we would do is we, we like uh, different shows that we'll watch together and we'll call it what happened on this, what happened on that. Different things that you can do together. So it's good to give her unconditional emotional sensitivity. Exactly. Don't make her feel stupid. Like, that's dumb to feel like that. Yeah, you see that? Oh, you stupid for that one. I ain't know. You know, that's crazy. Then you wonder why you ain't getting there late at night. Right. You didn't call her stupid okay. early in the day. And it's going to come back. <laughs> yes. That's the thing. That's why I wouldn't do nothing crazy. I feel like I fall asleep too quick. <laughs> I, wait till I go to sleep and it is all. I'll be up like this all day. I the number two thing that a woman needs is financial security. You don't want to be someone that is I mean, when we first got married, I was the one that was a little bit better at finance. Mm -hmm. He I'm like, Lord, like, you still better. <laughs> <laughs> he felt like because he was a man, he should be taking care of that. But his way of doing the finances was like, I remember this and that. It's all up here. It, and it doesn't work out like that. And so, you know, we kind of tried to work it out. It was stressful. But he finally, like, well, he cried about it. He mm -hmm. said, okay, I'm weak in that area. You're strong in that area. So pride is a killer. It okay. is. It is. We're here to complete each other. So if I'm strong at something that you're weak at, let let me complete that part. Let me do my part of, of completing you. Yeah. Don't think that just because you're the man, I should be doing that. Now, I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I don't want to come and pick it out stuff from you. I have me with makeup. I don't need that kind of completing nothing. Mm -hmm. no, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> never worry about that. Ain't none of that in me. Yeah, yeah, you might want to scoop it this way. Alright, so the next thing that a woman needs, she needs a vision to support. Or dreams to support for the family. Right. You got a plan? We'll take your plan and try. You know, we'll help you create, we'll help you think of Opportunities to keep that's the most high. <coughs> the ability to be creative. You, you give us something to work with, give us those lemons. Make some lemonade, some lemon tarts. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But you have to uh, give us something to support. And then some things, even with your vision, don't mean that she's going to get it right away and run with it. Sometimes you have to get, let allow time. And allow God to do his part. Because most high waited on you to get you to this point. Right. So then you have to be supportive and do more praying rather than talking to them about stuff. That's what I like. I want to go back to because I'm interested. Okay. Don't be tired. You know, I think we should do things to, to budget. Come together and talk about budgeting. This is what we have lined up. These are the bills that we have lined up. This is what we're trying to do. It's the same as this is the long-term long goal that we're trying to do with our money. But like I said, you know, try to save something 
where you can have some some spending money, just some what they call blow money. Mm-hmm. Don't don't every time you ask like well, we can't get that. No, we can't get that. It's just five dollars. <laughs> that don't wear on me every while. Mm-hmm. But then you don't want to get to where you you doing something else to make sure you keep an account hidden away right. that he doesn't know about because he, he he's this type of way. You don't want to have anything hidden. In your marriage, you don't want to draw on your spouse to feel like they need to hide something from you or do something else on the side because mm-hmm. you're not being supportive of what they're trying to do. Mm-hmm. And then one thing, even though um, she did the work of the finances, she was always coming to me to make the final decision about what we're going to do right. and where we're going to go. So right. it's mm-hmm. important uh, to understand that and so give the... Exactly. And just as, as, as she supports your vision, if your wife have a vision about something she want to do, support it. Some she want to do around the house. Some she's a career that she thinking about going in. You know, y'all pray about it, and then you know, if it's the most I will support it. So support the things that she desires also too, because you don't want it just about you, and you ain't doing never doing nothing to support her, or even thinking right. about her. Right. right. So and it's a balance. Work around your visions. I'm the head. You're supposed to support it. You're supposed to do this, and then she's just she's feeling like, well, I'm just here just to. Serve you. I'm just serving you. <laughs> I don't have a purpose. I don't have no. You also shouldn't have to say that I'm here. I'm the head at all times. You have to say I'm here. Right. I'm the head. I'm the head. Right. All times. Right. Right. So I'm right. right. You're right though. You're right. So you, you shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to do that. Just to remind you. So it's, it's, it's important because, like I said, it, that's on two sides. A man shouldn't have to do it, shouldn't have to say it, but then a man shouldn't feel like he have to say it. Right. I'm saying it again. A man shouldn't have to say it, but a man shouldn't have to always feel like he have to say it because every time with you, <laughs> every time with you, he getting competition. Are you never really uh, listening to what he's saying? i uh, being supportive for him. So he had to keep saying he did. Because I'm going to say this. Really, we all got to check check ourselves. Because growing up over here is in most women to be independent of their man. And you don't realize how much that been ingrained in you because we haven't had culture. Right. We don't realize how much of the Beyonce spirit is in our ones. You see what I'm saying? So that's the part of us that, okay, if we're going to embrace this culture, we got to embrace this culture. We can't have the American culture and the Israelite culture and try to fuse it all together. I would say this too, also. Thank you. Go ahead, brother. Like when you're bridging. Like, like for my wife, like I'm, I grew up in a very, my father was a Marine. This year. All right, so it, it wasn't like too much that was said that my mom did not agree with. Right. And so for me, um, you know, me and my brother, we have that military mindset going into marriage. I ain't seen some right, but we just know how things were structured, you know. And so then my wife, here is my mom and my aunties. So it is, it is, a, it is. A, <laughs> Are coming together and so um, it, it'd be rough, you know. We're going into nine years, it'd be rough, you know. Um, how I deal with the kids, you know, hey, I'm home by myself with the kids, you know, it's working. And then uh, I may be going and my wife's home with the kids, and it may not be working. So I just think that, uh, I think that's you know, you're bridging it, to, you're breaking, you're making it come together because mm-hmm. I am, you know, I'm you know, I said it before, my, my brother's a Latin. I am a hard man, you know, mm-hmm. and so, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm not, when I'm hard, I'm hard all the way, and thank God for my wife, you know, she loves me, but then that, hey, that time, balance. She, she, she helps me keep the balance, because other than that, when she gets hard and I'm hard, it just, it's hard. It's so hard. You ain't got to choose side. That's areas then where we all have to be, okay, let me look at these areas and see if it's killing their relationship. 
Right. It don't matter how long I've been like. Right. If my being hard and if I know I'm hard, then it's areas I need to grow. Because I want to conform it to the image of the scriptures. So our wives is there to keep with those balance. But if there's no areas that I have to get together, then your wife needs to see you trying right. to curve those things. Like you know what I'm saying? And then she can work with that. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Go ahead, sis. I was just speaking on the whole independent woman thing. So I know for me that's something that I struggle with. And I know it wasn't anything um, to cause harm that my parents did that. But, you know, you in church and they're like, well, let's be real. The odds of you get married because of the ratio between men and women in church it isn't that high. So just in case you don't get married, you need to be able to take care of yourself. Right. Mm, and so okay. it's all like this push on, you know, making sure that I can take care of myself in mm-hmm. case, gotcha. you know, the be all, the end all is not marriage. Right. Because mm-hmm. that's not for everybody. And they're like, let's be realistic. What if you don't get married? Can you provide for yourself? Can you do this? Can you do that? So it was always pushed to, you know, to be independent and not just sit there and hope to get a man to take, come right, take care of. Right, 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 right. On the other hand, so in one way that was good, but on the other hand, it's like, well, I brought that same attitude into marriage. I'm like, I can do this myself. Mm. I'm going to do this myself. Mm. Like, if I wait for Josh, it's going to take forever. I'm going to do it myself. Mm. You know, like, and so um, rather than being patient and allowing my husband to be the alpha, mm-hmm. sometimes I have to curb myself because yes. I'm used to being the alpha. Mm. And not only, being, not only being independent, but also, like, for me, I'm the, the eldest child in my family. And the eldest grandchild. So I was always number one. <laughs> that's just the truth. Like, I always joke, but it's the truth that I was always a gold child. Right? So Should have had never I had had it. Oh, my God. <laughs> and um, so bringing that same attitude and everything into the marriage, sometimes it can be helpful to Josh, but also sometimes it can be harmful to, to our marriage because... Mm. That right. whole alpha right. attitude, right. like I can do this, I right. got this, I, you know. And sometimes I'm sure he is like, oh yeah, she got this, she good. And other times I'm sure he's like, okay, but really, like, you mm. chill, you know. Mm. Right. Uh, so it's for I know for me, it's still trying to find that balance. Mm-hmm. When is it okay to Go kind ahead and of be more care. assertive versus right. right. you no, know, let your husband. Go ahead mm. and lead on this. Exactly. Um, and it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fine right. you know, balance. It's as simple as asking. Just asking. Right. Like, is this going to bother you? So I'm going to do this because I, I want to do it. Uh-huh. If there's something that needs to be done, mm-hmm. and I feel like it's taking a long time to look. I'm going to get to it. I'm going to ask you about it, but I don't want it. Is that going to bother you if I go ahead and take care of it, or are you really trying to do that? You know, mm-hmm. I, I think uh, my always, always I have in my mind as far as just, I don't want to transgress. Eve transgressed me. Because she went, she, she believed in that serpent. She went on ahead to the head of town. She left her back to her company. You know, she transgressed. I don't want to get into a point where if if I do this, am I going to transgress against my husband? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that leads to disrespect because if I go ahead and do it and I took control over it because you didn't do it, he's going to be feeling what? Disrespect. Disrespect. Mm-hmm. Now we got the whole new issue here because if I would just be patient and I'm going to get my own way and I'm trying to do it in my own time because I want to do it right now, right now, right now. Like I said, it's a simple question. You can just come in wisdom and just say, look, I'm not trying, I'm trying to be patient, I'm being honest. I, I wanted it done yesterday. But I'm not even busy. Is it okay if I go ahead and just just take care of that, or is that something that you're trying to do? That you know, because I asked you. But mm-hmm. if you don't mind, I can do it. That's right. Yeah. And that's why that's why um, you know women and men, y'all had to you had to be wet wise because you know especially like if I, if my job then put me on extra hours, I'm working right. wide open. Right. Then on my day off. You got a big old assignment. <laughs> All I want to do just that first day is just chill. I don't want to build nothing. I ain't trying to put nothing together. She, Cause she gets like, oh, oh, when you home, we can get this done. We can get this done. And I be looking like, that's work. <laughs> I don't want to do no work. So it's just like sometimes I I, didn't, I just muscle up the strength. Like, come on, baby, let's jump in there and do it. Or sometimes she'll be like, okay, I got it. 
and she doing it, and I hear in the end that, and going in, boom, boom. I was like, all right, let me get up. <laughs> and then she let me do it. <laughs> then she go in. Things that I said, 
I got to find a woman that know how to know how to cook, know how to do these things. I'm like, if she can't cook, then you don't need on my radar. But she she got me when we were dating. I said, this woman, yeah. you know when you first date, you young. I came from college. I came back. I was not college. I got a drug head come on. Uh-huh. So you, when you young at that mind, you think about, okay, I'm going to find some people to put on the team. So you know what I'm saying? So you're trying to think who you put on the team. And we, we got to talking, and we got to dating, liking each other. Then this woman was coming over, because I guess I was living more in the mess than I thought. She coming over, buying me a little bedroom suit, washing the clothes, because I used to use that Purex. The Purex boy had your clothes. Oh, I mean, it felt like a Brillo pad, but me and my brother, we was washing and scraping. <laughs> <laughs> we had no food. My brother wake up making cornbread and milk for breakfast. <laughs> David used to come over. Y'all eat cornbread. David used to come over. He spent it like a David would cook. So David would cook. So we wilding and stuff like that. But I started, I'm like, man, this woman is serious. She is one. Boy, she's coming over here. She making sure we clean. Making sure we set up and washing. I was like, ooh, weird. Man, I got the, I probably got the pen. This is mine. <laughs> she got qualities like my mama. That's what a man looking for, qualities like his mama. And when I see that, I said, I got to grab that. And woman is looking for qualities in her day. Exactly, exactly. I think you had something? Oh, I was going to say a lot of that. Um, the difference is that we see in our background. That's, that probably comes up more in the argument. That's just because when you was raised. <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. mm-hmm. Rules are very important when you talk about culture. Yeah. That ain't no bad word when you hear rules. Yeah. That's that ain't no bad word. That's so a beautiful word. Right. And I had to learn that. Mm-hmm. I had a hard time with that word. I'm like, submit. <laughs> because, because, because you think about way, a wrestling match. Yeah, the, way, the way it's been like, sold to us, it's almost like... Um, like I'm like almost like right. a slave, right. like right. you know, like it, the way it's, right, the way that I not it. y'all. <laughs> Tell about the <laughs> But the way I it's, it's taken me a hard a, a long time to really understand what it means to submit, and it's not the way that it's been taught to us. Um, it doesn't mean that I don't have a voice. That's and right. That, I don't get to say anything. I need to walk ten paces behind my husband, right. and I put that down on the ground, not with him in the eye. Like you know, I'm right. not that his. Not so I'm not his property, right. you know. Um, but looking at it as more so like, well, he's team lead, mm-hmm. you know. So um, and he's the liaison. So if stuff go down, okay. you know, we mm-hmm. talk to him. Mm-hmm. You know, but we're still on the same team. We're still working towards. Um, the same goals mm-hmm. and everything, but everybody has their part to play on the team. Exactly. It's, you know, it's not a matter of, like I said, you know, we can look him in the eye. You know, That's right. Because right. you know. both roles is of equal importance. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There's nothing different between a man and a woman role. They, they roles is as equal as important to the most high. So that's uh that's important. Cause like I said, submission ain't no bad word. All that means is sub means under and mission to come under a mission. So that's all you're doing. You're coming under your husband's mission. Right. You're not right, submitting right. to him in the sense of trying to do everything he said. But once right. you understand the mission of the mission, family, yes. you 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 grab hold to it and you flow. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's what that's all what submission is. You know what I'm saying? So ain't nothing ain't nothing wrong with that. Everybody part of that is also that the man also has to submit himself to God. Exactly. They, there you go. Come on, brother. Don't let him deal with it. Go ahead, brother. That's part of it. Everybody submit somebody. Right. Okay. right. Because if I'm not submitted to God, I can't tell you nothing. Right. And the most I'm going to show that because your relationship with your wife is going to mirror what he has problems with. Mm-hmm. And that's what he had to show me. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you having a problem with that right there, huh? 
Let me come out. Let me tell you. Because I've been having problems with that. Feel like you're being ignored. Yeah. I'm being ignored by you and some areas. Right. So I'm going to let you feel how I feel. Mm-hmm. So once I get that straight with him, he straighten that out. Now, woman, don't be like, yeah, you feeling this because God is feeling that. No. <laughs> you know how to do God is making you feel this round. <laughs> so whenever, and the brothers, whenever there's a problem, you got to remember the man is always responsible. It might not be your fault. Might not be your fault, but you're responsible. It's because when it happened in the Eve, God didn't come to Eve first. He went to Adam. Adam went all doubt, even though he know Eve messed up. So you have to remember that you're always responsible, even in your household. So a lot of times, when me and my wife would have disagreements or something like that, and something would happen, I would always go to God and pray and say, God, okay, if you allowed this to happen, what are you trying to show me about me? Right. Before I even pray about her. Mm-hmm. Show me what are you trying to show me by me because you allowed this to happen for a reason to show me something. Mm-hmm. So get me together first. Show me me so so I can be a better fit for this relationship or a better fit for this. And a lot of times he do that, man, he'd be like, wow. But he'll show you something that you ain't see mm-hmm. and say, this is why you're having problems right here. Speaking of that too, which is, you know, he's talking about submission and stuff. They also show you that in covering and stuff. Ain't no way no another man is going to be another man's cover. You say that in church all the time. Oh man, you got to be, be under somebody today, though. Pastor, he my cover. Are you, you married to him? Wow. Ain't no way in scripture where it says that a man is another man's cover. Mm. I'm. That's right. <laughs> I mean, being real, just think about it. Well, that's, that's, that whole concept is um, it's homosexual in nature. Mm. Amen. It is. Mm. You know, because the scripture mm-hmm. says what? Um, who's the one? Um, of course, a man is a woman's cover, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You know, same thing about a man being another man's cover. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. But, but you don't want to get an attitude is, I don't need no guidance. But you do. When it comes to, cause, and I understand specifically what Josh is saying, because he's writing what he's saying. You <laughs> can't know other man really because. I got to tell the men all the time, Mm -hmm. men just do this. That's why I always have, I have times in the month where we don't meet on a Saturday because I don't need to be divorced in your house. Right. Where every week you bringing your wife to come hear me. She getting answers to hear me, but she never hear you at home. Right. So that's why it's important. I tell people, do do not make your family dependent on another man. That all the wisdom and understanding they getting is based off another man's teaching and you ain't doing nothing in the house. Right. So that's why it's important that I have I have two Saturday Sabbaths that we meet together, and then you have two Sabbaths where you can establish the Sabbath on your own. On those days, then we meet on those Sundays. So it's important to be the man in your house and the boss in your house. Right. But it also is important is to have guidance of leadership in a sense where a lot of people are just renegades. They ain't never been submitted under nobody. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So they just out there. They just starting a ministry based off of her to start a ministry based off because they mad at somebody and bleeding on the people. Right. And you ain't got nobody that can validate your ministry. Mm-hmm. Everywhere I've been and served, they can validate that I've been there and I've served. That's you know order. what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's order. That's not, yeah, not exactly. Mm-hmm. But I'm glad you said that we're covering because some people feel like, okay, you ain't got no covering. Some people tell me you ain't supposed to be doing what you're doing. Right. Mm-hmm. You ain't got no covering. Who your covering? Where I'm at it. <laughs> the most half I cover. Right. You understand what right. I'm saying? So it's the difference between. Setting yourself under leadership and being connected right. to somebody that can validate your ministry and give you wisdom versus saying, this is my covering. I got to have this and I got to have this man over me. Where Whatever this man say, because some men will use that as control right. because the spirit of uh, what's her name? Jezebel right. ain't no feminine spirit. It's a masculine spirit right. because she she took over her husband and right. she performed in a masculine way. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So that can form, be formed in a man or a woman. Mm-hmm. Right. So you have to be careful where you have so much dependency because the most I would check that. He said, I'm going to see how dependent you are on these people in leadership. And just among us, he had to make me choose. Mm-hmm. I had to choose between my call and my father. Right. And that was the hardest decision. I mean, hard. It's not just my father, but my whole family. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why the scripture says that 
any man that don't hate his mother, brother, sister, father more than me is not worthy of me. If you put anybody like that before your calling, before your assignment, then you ain't fit for what the most I want to do. Now, I'm not saying you just go out there and just do what you're going to do and y'all just got to disagree so you make a quick decision. Mm -mm. But it took me almost four years to wait and hear the most I say, I need you to go. Right. I, can tell, I had plenty of time to call Josh. Mad. <laughs> Josh. They said this. I had to call David, talk to David and Supreme to went to their house. Upset. You know what I'm saying? But I wasn't going to move off no emotions. I was only moving when I hear the most I say it's time. Right. So that's important. But we're going to stop right there, y'all, because it's, yes. it's 3 o'clock. We got to go. Everybody do 100% of what you're supposed to do. Right. 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 Don't stop. 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 Don't st